Hi there, this is Fiona here with another Sign Trigger tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to set up a pretty simple spin the bottle. Um, this is a recreation of a prefab that I made in SDK2 a long time ago. Now we're going to do it in Sign Trigger. Check the description below for useful download links. Be sure to get the latest version of the VRChat SDK and Sign Trigger. There's also a downloadable version of this prefab. So the first thing I've got already set up some basic visuals. I've also set up a hierarchy that has a spinner object. Underneath that, there's a rigid body object. And underneath that, there is the actual visuals, which is the thing that the bottle looks like right there. OK, so the way that this works is with physics and object sync to make sure that everybody sees the bottle pointed in the same place as everyone else. And so in order to do that reliably, we're going to want to make sure that we understand ownership and do just a little bit of networking. So we're going to go over that in this tutorial. OK, so the first thing that we're going to need in order to do any kind of physics thing is a rigid body. So I've already named an empty here rigid body. And this is the thing that moves. Um, that is the physics object that Unity uses. So we're going to go ahead and add rigid body right here. We're going to expand this out. Because we are spinning it, we want to make sure to give some constraints, OK? So let's expand the constraints here. And you can see our relative axes. So position, that's this, right? These, this is position. So we want to freeze all that, x, y, z. Go ahead and freeze that. Now rotation, that's as if it was spinning around these, right? So like this. That's the way we want it to spin. That's around the y axis. And so we want to freeze x and z so that way it doesn't roll off the table kind of direction or um, spin around this way. We want it to just spin around this arrow right here. So this is what we want our constraints to look like, like this. The other way that the spin the bottle works is we're going to give it some force as if you twist it pretty fast, but we're going to give it some drag as well so that way it slows down over time. In order to make sure that it slows down and doesn't just sit there and spin forever, we're going to just set drag and angular drag to 1. OK? And I'm going to turn off use gravity because we don't actually need that right now. But we do not want kinematic because that will turn the physics off. That's only if you're driving it directly with scripts. Otherwise, we are done with our rigid body. OK? Now let's go up to the spinner object. So this is going to be our button. This is the thing that we interact with that actually makes uh, something happen. So here's where we're going to put our sign trigger. We've already got a sphere collider is, is trigger. So I'm going to go ahead and add a sign trigger right here. Let's put in a custom and we're going to call it um, spin. All right. OK, and so now we need to figure out how we're actually going to spin this thing. So one thing we're going to want to do is add some relative torque. OK, so let's first of all set up rigid body, add relative torque. Torque is twisting. All right, so force is pushing, torque is twisting. And we know we want to put that around the y axis. But how much do we want? Do we want the exact same spin every time? We do not. We want that to be a random number. So let's go ahead and make a variable that we can randomize to put into there. So let's add a float. And I'm going to call this spin amount. All right. And then here, we're going to put that variable right here for spin amount. Now the rigid body that we want is going to be that bottle rigid body. I'll just drag it in right there. OK, so. Now we've got the spin amount. Before this all happens, we need to set that spin amount. So let's make random number. Um, random dot range is the thing that we want. Let's make sure that happens above this action. OK. And the two, the bottom that I want, I just happen to know this because I tested it out, is about 1,000. The top is about 2,000. And we're going to save that in. Oops, and I did integers. Let's do the floats. OK, remember a lot of times that you have an action, it's got different flavors. If this isn't giving you what you want, maybe you need to pick the float version or a different flavor. Oh, no, you have to put this back in. 
2,000, and we're going to do a spin amount right there. Okay, so it's going to pick a spin amount. It's going to add that relative torque to our rigid body. That's great. That's basically the main thing that we want to have happen. All right, now how do we make sure that everybody sees the same thing? When one person pushes the button, this action is local. So they're the only person that's going to see it move right now. The way that you do that with objects in VR chat is you add object sync. So let's go ahead over to our rigid body and add object sync right here. All right, object sync. Okay, back to the spinner. The other thing that we need to make sure is the person who is syncing the object is also the person that's moving it. Okay, and so that's the person that pushes this button. So let's do networking. Set owner. All right, let's drag that up to the top. Make sure it's the first thing that we do. And the local player, that's whoever pushed the button, we want them to own this rigid body. So let's go ahead and just drag that in right there. So the first thing that happens when you spin it is you're making sure that whoever pushed that button owns it. They're going to add that torque. That motion then will be sent to everybody via object sync. That's the basic thing. When you're talking about moving objects, object sync and ownership, that's really all you need to do. Whoever's moving the object should own the object. Object sync will then show it to everybody. Um, the next thing I want to do is I don't want people to be able to spam that button and just keep keep going over and over and over and over with uh, the, the pushing. So I'm gonna make another event and I'm gonna call this resets, reset right here. And I will call this after a delay. We're gonna give it three seconds. That seems about a good enough time that the, the button should slow down. And the things that we wanna do so after we spin it, let's just turn off this collider. Set enabled, collider.set enabled, and then let's put the spinner itself right in here, and we're gonna say false, okay? And now let's duplicate this, stick this down in our reset custom. Oh. Drag that in there, right there it goes. Okay, and now we're gonna set it true. And now let's call that. So using sign trigger, send custom event, and we are sending copy paste, reset. Okay, so now when we call spin, we actually move the bottle, we turn off the collider, and then immediately we call reset. Reset is called, it waits three seconds, and then it's gonna turn that collider back on so that the next person can interact with it. If we wanted to make sure that multiple people couldn't spam the button together, we would need to also turn this collider off for everyone. There's a few ways we could do that. In this case, I'm gonna go for the easy version and I'm just gonna use a custom event. I'm gonna make another custom event, add event, custom, and I'm gonna call this uh, custom down here. Disable collider, okay? And then this one is going to be the same thing. Well, actually, we're going to take this, this one, move this in here. Okay, we're going to disable that collider, except this time we're going to send this to everybody. All right, so everybody's going to get that collider disabled. So the way that we call that then is we need to call another sign trigger, send custom event. And this one is going to be disable collider. Okay. And let's just, for our own sanity, put this one above reset. Okay, disable collider, that's sent to everybody. And now, after it disables it, how about we have that one reset it? Because that also needs to get sent to everybody. So we'll just put it in there. Okay, so now everybody also calls reset. Reset is then done locally. See right here, local. You do not want to ever have send to all happen twice right, in the same chain. You wanna make sure that there's only ever one send to all in any chain, so you don't send this one to everybody and then have this one sent to everybody and you end up multiplying it and you just clog the network. So that should, that should uh, prevent button spamming for all involved. Okay, we're gonna just put those down there. Now, 
One little caveat here. Unity likes to clamp the maximum velocity, uh, angular velocity of objects, and it's pretty low. I want this bottle to really spin. So I need to add another event, and we're gonna add this on start. And this is gonna be a little rigid body thing. So rigid body set max angular velocity. Okay, so again, let's put in our rigid body right here. And I'm gonna give this a maximum of 500. Okay, so on start, it'll just say, we can spin this this fast, no, and we can put in whatever torque we like. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is actually put in the interact. And I like to do these always separate. Oh, I just saw it, there you go. There's the interact, and all the interact is gonna do is just call spin. So sign trigger, send custom event, and that one is spin. Okay, so hopefully what will happen now is the rigid body is all set up. It's got its constraints. It's got its maximum velocity that we set on start. When we click the button, everybody sees that collider disabled. After three seconds, everyone sees it back enabled. And object sync will let us know that it is going to always stop in the same position for everyone. And we've guaranteed that by setting the owner on click. Okay, let's give it a go. Okay, here we are. Let's try it out. Okay, so they gave us a spin. It's spun pretty good. You can see that collider is disabled, comes back after three seconds. Okay, that should be all there is to it. You should always also test this in game whenever you have any networking with other players or with uh, remote players using uh, the tools that VRChat provides in the SDK. So that should be that for this tutorial. Happy spinning, everybody. Talk to you later.